five. The front lines of the war. I was on the front lines of the war. I saw soldiers eating dirt and grass. I saw the women they left behind and children with flies in their mouths. Livestock wandered through the battle zone. Metal made nests in trees. Mortars and machine guns were pointed at the sky. Soldiers made love after dark. Kitchen boys ate scraps and waited naked for their uniforms to dry. I heard the arms manufacturers laugh over pate and wine. I saw them clean blood from their teeth with matchsticks. I saw hair and clothes on fire. While governments sat at five-star tables to negotiate. I felt wind and water flow across my body. My skin was an embrace of unknown forces. Warm and liquid running through me. The generals combed their mustaches on the way to the press conference and spit into handkerchiefs. Their teeth fall out, their lips and tongues fall off, their faces fall off, till only a neck remains. Handlers rush to hold another head with a doleful expression to stick on the bloody stump. The general coughs into the microphone and says, we are following the will of the people. As his mistress gives birth to an angel with bat wings, and his wife buys a thousand dollar purse on Champs Elysees. I saw grass turn gray like hair. I saw monkeys snug neckties and drive to work to pick fleas from each other's fur. I heard rain on the metal roof and animals howling in the slaughterhouse. I heard earthworms chuckle in time with a symphony of machines of the fire. I saw that to presidents and generals the earth is a pinata. Beat it like a prisoner till sweet treasures spill. The first one to break it open wins. I figured I should try to win the race. I discussed mortgage rates with a loan officer and calculated percentages. I moved decades like checker pieces, square to square. I tracked financial security through the scope of a sniper rifle and on the radar of a fighter jet. I wanted others to surrender, to quit fighting for what was mine. I forgot that armies killed for what I have, and whole continents died for the idea of ownership. I bought a lawnmower on the installment plan. It came with a lifetime guarantee that nothing would ever change. I held an M16 in my hand. It was light as a plastic toy. I visited temples with shrapnel scars across the walls. I sat on a hilltop, watching for gunships to appear, waiting for rockets to bloom across the sky. I met refugees who fled with nothing but memories of rape and murder, their houses burned by soldiers, animals cooked and eaten, daughters go missing and don't return. During a lull in battle, I walked across a field between government and insurgent lines. Villagers were harvesting rice, carrying sheaves of grain on shoulder yokes, sweating in thick hot sun. Guns were silent on both sides. At the dinner table, an officer inspected a rifle and shot a hole in the ceiling. I thought of Frank Stanford and his shotgun and the three bullets he fired into his own heart. I heard news reports about a cult of personality. The new leader could only talk of leadership and the need for others to follow. 
but no one had anywhere else to go or a voice to raise above the sound of marching boots. I heard water flowing in a stream. I remembered everyone I love. I remembered my father. How could I forget since he now fills my body? I traveled to the conflict zone, and now it travels in me. Brother to the worms eating their way through Earth. Nothing is distant in miles or history. Feedback loops of taxes and invasion dance in time with imperatives of perpetual war. You don't have to pull a trigger or open the bomb bay doors. Refugees and bureaucrats, presidents and secretaries, bank tellers and factory hands, plumbers and golf pros, rice farmers and fashion models, everyone is on the front lines of the war.